What's going on, folks? Once again, I'm Nev from Nev's Tech Bits, otherwise known as your friendly neighborhood basement dweller. Don't worry, ma'am, I am from the internet. And being from the internet, I can tell you a thing or two about how to get the biggest, best download speeds and what router will suit you nicely. This is what I've been using over here, the D-Link AX5400. And over here on the right, I just acquired the TP-Link AX5400. So we're going to test these two against each other and see exactly how they do now. One thing I'm really happy about when it comes to the D-Link is the mesh. I've gotten several D-Link routers and they mesh up just nicely, just perfectly. I got multiple TP-Link AX units, but unfortunately they do not mesh up so nicely. But there's definitely a lot more to a router than just mesh. There's top speed and there's reliability. Also, range and channel management are a very important thing. So, let's get these things turned on. Let's give these things a shot and see how well they do. Okay, so to start off, let's take a look at the D-Link XO5400. Man, this looks like something out of a nightmare. It looks like a crazy spider thing, and that is unbelievably cool. It is unbelievably easy to get fingerprint smudges on the front of these mate finish units. Anyways, this unit has six antennas and it has a spot to plug in USB to the back if you want a network drive, which is really useful. So here on the back you can see we got two USB ports and uh, four gig ethernet ports. Uh, the USB ports you'll notice there's USB 2.0 and USB 3.0. So yeah, you can dual wield USB drives. D-Link provides a really useful app on the Apple and Android operating system that you can use to uh, see what's going on. There's lots of options on here that you can use to both torment and monitor your children. Next up, we'll have a look at all the channels to see where this unit put itself. Of course, uh, we want our arches to be with each other. We don't want them conflicting. This D-Link A120, you can see it kind of conflicts with the uh, Wi-Fi 9 channel. That's unfortunate. It's also a whole lot uh, better than most places. And in the 5G, it looks like we're doing pretty good. Next up, let's try a real world speed test. I got my main workhorse unit over here. It's locked in with a Wi-Fi 6 card and I got my Wi-Fi 6 router just sitting right over there. My main server is just over to the left, also using Wi-Fi 6. Let's see what the top speed is we can get from it. So here we go, direct line of sight connection, and I can only get about 20 megabytes a second off of my test file, and that test file is a video file. Same video file I use for all my transfers. So yeah, 25 megabytes a second, not the best. I could definitely get better with other units, uh, but this thing also does mesh really well, really simple with the other units. That means whatever D-Links I buy and review new from here on out, I can hook up in mesh with this thing in unison, which is very nice. Also, the box art is pretty damn skippy, and there's a lot to be said about that. Next up, let's have a look at the TP-Link version of the AX5400 unit. That's right, the Archer 73. Now, this thing's a little bit newer. The box art definitely isn't quite as skippy as the D-Links is, so there's no way this thing could be more powerful, right? I mean, look at this subpar, not quite as awesome box art on the back. Sleek, sexy design that you can impress your date with when you bring them home, or not, whatever. On the back of this sweet lady, we have gigabyte LAN ports, we have buttons for WPS, LED, Wi-Fi on and off, and reset. Of course, we have a power button, and over on the side, we have one port for USB 3.0, so D-Link's got two. Lots of lights on the front that no one actually cares about. They're just there to impress the ladies, am I right, guys? Seriously though, the lights are power, Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi 5, internet, then ethernet, USB, and WSPS. Once again, at my battle station, everything's line of sight, everything's operating off of Wi-Fi 6 to get uh, the best, most real accurate top speed of this unit. Oh frick guys, after a little bit of tweaking, check it out, 50 megabytes a second, that's the fastest I've ever had over land, this is perfect, I am so happy with this. Mom, mom, yeah, 50 megabytes a second, mom. 50 megabytes a second. Can you believe that?
50 megabytes a second. I've never had a router go that fast. The TP-Link that I've had before, I think it was the AX1500, the AX1800, the AX3000. None of them came anywhere near that. I'm pretty sure that they all capped out around 19, maybe 20, 25. My Asus, I had an Asus router that actually managed to do 30 on the Wi-Fi 5, Wi-Fi AC. But man, 40, 50 megabytes a second? That's just crazy. This is the best router I've ever reviewed. Okay, so next up, let's take a look at where it puts itself within the channels, and uh, it's definitely out for itself of conflicting with multiple channels. Not really conflicting in the 5.4, but I'm wondering why it wouldn't move itself over a channel and just take an area of its own. Now, I really want to point out that the range on all of these units seems to be about the same. I got my Wi-Fi analyzer unit here, and I actually go out to the backfield to take a look and uh, see how far they get. And this is about as far as I get before things really start cutting out, before anything really starts cutting out. So that's about it. The TP-Link definitely gets the highest top speed. Once again, I'm freaking blown away by the top speed that it manages to achieve. However, I don't think I'm going to be switching from my D-Link XO right now because I already have a mesh network set up. And man, when you got kids, time is definitely a thing to factor in. And setting up a whole new Wi-Fi network is definitely going to take you some time. However, the TP-Link, once again, is much faster. It should be said that there definitely are ways to make the TP-Link mesh, but it's uh, very difficult. If you have the ability to, I definitely recommend doing it, but if you're not so technically inclined, or if you're one of those types of people that just have super bad luck with technology, I wouldn't recommend trying that just yet. The D-Link is definitely easier to hook up, but once again, definitely doesn't have the best top speed. Anyways, folks, that's it for me, Nev from Nev's Tech Bits. Hit that like and subscribe button if you like this stuff. It's always appreciated, folks. It helps me out. And as always, folks, take care of each other, will yous?